Hey, my name is Roman, it's Marketing Watch House. Thanks for watching, thanks for all your feedback and for the questions. Remember, the more questions you ask, the easier for me is to create videos because I'm stuck in a lot of cases to understand what I want to film about. And when there is an existing problem, it's way, way easier for me to find a direction and to try to solve it for you. So the last episode, we tried to create the view and we actually succeeded it after a few fails. And in this episode, I'm going to show you what is the scheduled query and how to work with this beast. So the basic, uh, very, very short description of a view, we kind of uh, have a very set of uh, functions, a set of stuff we wanted to do uh, one after another, and we save it. Uh, and each time we need to access some data, we can just use this template. Yeah, the query, uh, the, the, the save view thing and the view itself is like a template to use for SQL. The downside of the template, it kind of time consuming, it has to go through all the data each time you uh, query it, some, uh, it, you query it, and in a lot of cases it's just not worth using it, if you have a very complex thing. But the cool thing that in most of the cases uh, you have a BI team, some uh, BA members that are actually solving this issue, but if you're working for your own project, sometimes what you want to do if you have a complex uh, SQL and then you have a lot of accounts that are too big you want to use a scheduled query. So the difference between scheduled query is that exactly as in a view, you will create your SQL. And exactly as in a view, you're going to save, uh, you're going to save it as a, some table name, whatever. But after you do that, uh, BigQuery will go there and run it and save the result permanently. So you, each time you want to access this SQL, you're not going to rerun it. You only will work with the final uh, saved results. And it will be scheduled every week, every month, every day, whatever you want, but usually it's everyday stuff. For example, you can make your customers report that you have or accounts reports that are scheduled every day at 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, you push it as a scheduled query and then you can access this data millions of times per day and it's going to be extremely cheap because instead of working with a lot of default tables, what you're going to do, you're going to work with the final results that might be just a number or like a small table. So the scheduled query is an amazing thing to use when you have a lot of data and you need to access this data again and again th throughout the day. Uh, what you need to remember that after the scheduled query runs, it has to save the results. And if you save too many results, too much of the results, you have to pay for that. Uh, as far as I remember, I actually don't remember exactly. Um, and you also need to delete this if it's not usable, whatever. Uh, so only use scheduled query when you actually need it. For example, in this case, when I work with the 14 kilobytes and there is no time delays, no time issues, I would never use a scheduled query. Unless, of course, I would have to create a YouTube video. This is a completely other, different story. So what are we going to do? We're going to our view, we're going to uh, details, and we're going to copy the same code that I used last time. I'm going to paste it here and then push as scheduled query, cre create new scheduled query. So let's create it as account level everyday report. And then let's do in the very beginning, just for simplicity, a huge word table. Then I need to say how, how often I need to run it. For example, if you work with a huge uh, network of, um, you work with Salesforce or whatever, uh, you can use the hourly update repeats rate, but in most of the cases in marketing, you either use daily or weekly, depending on how much data you work with. I kind of can imagine a lot of work with the app data that requires a weekly update. Uh, I also can imagine a lot of Google Ads stuff that requires a daily update and especially the sessions data. But um, in most of the cases, I would say it's daily update. So then you need to define start now, or schedule the start time. I would recommend you to use a scheduled start time because you can uh, easily at the moment right here set up when exactly you wanted to run it and be careful with the time zones. For example, if you work with the Google Ads data and you live somewhere close to um, APAC region, close to Eastern Europe, for example, um, Berlin and to the right, uh, and you at the same time run campaigns somewhere in the USA, somewhere in North America, South America, the day, and you have an account set up in, a, uh, for example, Toronto daytime or like New York, 
uh, time, then it would take a lot of time for this account to reach the midnight. For example, if the time difference between your zone when you do the BigQuery, when you do this stuff and the New York is six hours, then the data in Google Ads BigQuery table will only be accessible and available after that. And if you have an export from Google Ads to BigQuery before that, then you're always going to miss the data. So to do that, what you need to, you need to calculate all these differences and say, for example, it's six or seven or eight hours. Then the, when you set up the BigQuery, it have to get the data from Google Ads at least half an hour later than that. So for example, Imagine it's 6 a.m. The data should be available. Then you schedule BigQuery to run at least at 6:30, just to make sure that everything works. And this table should run even later because BigQuery takes time to put all the data. There are some delays, and it does not guarantee that it will run it exactly at 6:30. It's just a window time definition. So in this case, for example, I usually don't work before 8 a.m. So I would say if it's possible to set up at 7.30, that's more than okay, but just to be sure, I don't work with any in North America at the moment, so I don't have to do that, but just for the simplicity. And then I say the same times on France, it actually works for me. And it will tell you that it will run every day at 7.30, Paris, uh, Europe, Paris, starting at this time, whatever. So I save it in project name, then Google, then the data set, exactly with the views, I say it in the views data set, because I'm a lazy one and table name. So let's do um, exactly the scheduled query name and destination ta table partition field. Uh, by the way, that's a great thing. You need to define the partitioning of your table. So it must be a timestamp or the date. And if you work with the Google Ads data, in most of the cases, it's either date or it also can be data date. It also works. So whatever is a date field, you just say, slice the data, slice the table by the date. If you do that, you will reduce the uh, amount of money you pay for your queries dramatically, like 10 times, 15 times, because instead of going through the whole table, it just go, uh, the BigQuery goes to the very, very specific partition, the slice of the dates you wanna work with. Then you can also say, if you wanted to append the table, overwrite the table, in 95% of the cases, I use overwrite, so I do some query and I just recalculate the data for that. Uh, and my SQL works like this. What you can do, you can say that your SQL only works with interval minus one day. So only with yesterday's data. And in this case, you need to do append to table because what you're going to do, you're going to append the previous day every day. But with append to table, there are also some issues that you need to uh, get rid of the wrong data. And in this case, you also need to get rid of uh, like first delete the yesterday's data and then reappend it. It kind of uh, time saver if you work with a huge data set and it also a money saver. But I've never actually worked with such data sets that are managed by myself. I, I work with uh, a data set that managed by other people, but that are managed by myself and I have to do the append table that almost never happens. You can ask for notifications and some other stuff, but I, I, I don't think it's actually needed. And yeah, no service account. I also, you can set up a service account if you need to. And I think that's, that's more than enough. Schedule start time and never schedule. So after I do that, nothing happens. It all just goes and saves the scheduled query. Um, I hope I don't need to to enter the, the password. So it saves the scheduled query, but it's not going to run it. And the cool thing that I'm going to schedule the queries here and it will show me the, here the scheduled query I did. Here it is. And current status, I think it's not running. So what you need to, uh, to remember, two things. First, we decided to create it as um, overwrite. So I only need to run it once to get all 10 days of the data. And second, I haven't run it yet because it's uh, scheduled for some other time. By the way, I have this like very weird mistakes happening on top. I don't know why, but I, I might, might set it up something wrongly with my cloud console, but BigQuery works, so just don't pay attention to them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to schedule the backfill. I click on display name 
and I do more scheduled backfill and I set up, if I'm not mistaken, today's date, tomorrow's date. So one day difference, I push backfill and backfill scheduled. Let's update this page and see what's going to happen. So, yeah, 20th of June and it's today at 14.32. So right now it's going to run it. I can, I can actually click on it and yeah, it, it's starting to work out. Scheduled query are not views. It would take, it will go to some very uh, specified separately process, wait until it has its own uh, time and like CPU usage. It would take a few minutes, up to five minutes to process, but it's never more than 10, I guess. It's around five minutes. And in five minutes, we come back and see the results. And I haven't noticed that when I created the schedule query, it actually created a job to run it right now, which is weird. I've never seen it before. And you can click on it and see the steps, but this doesn't actually matter for me. What matters if the data is there and if you can access it and how it actually will work. So let's go to our data sets here and Google Ads report views. And here we have our view from previous video with like dials and the table from this video with a sandwich. And I have the same, uh, and I have the same schema, but I also have the preview button. So I can preview the data because it actually exists. The beauty of it is that this table is only 89 rows, as exactly if I run the same, um, for example, I the view we run, um, by the way, I need to specify everything. When I run this view, I only have 14 kilobytes, and if I push run, and if I push run, I will get about 89 rows, but it still goes through 14 kilobytes. I mean, this is nothing, but if you work with a real accounts, with huge accounts, that might be megabytes or gigabytes, which is kind of costly and time consuming. But if I change this to my table, here it is, I only go through 89 uh, rows. And by the way, I don't know why, but I go in through 17 kilobytes, which is extremely weird should not be the case, but when you work with a huge data, probably this is just a rounding issue. But when, when you work with a huge, huge data, uh, you actually reduce number of uh, rows you're going through dramatically and you save a lot of time and a lot of money. And this is my data and it, it stays there. It's saved a solid state in the, the stone that works every day and it will be updated every day. So this is how scheduled queries works. You always can go here. You can uh, see the scheduled query you have. You can modify them. You can change your SQL there and just schedule the, B, uh, the backfill. To do this again, you need to click this and then you click more and then you say schedule the backfill. You can ask it to run from the service account. But again, I don't think this actually matters on this step. What matters is that you can you have two possibilities. If you work with a huge data sets uh, and you Output result is huge and you connect it directly with a live connection to Tableau or any other BI tool. You use the scheduled query. In all other cases, just use view to pre-save your SQL and that's all. Thank you for watching. Ask your comments in the comments below. Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to shoot your questions. This is very important, guys. Really important. And again, thank you for your support. Don't forget to push like and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.